Hey, 8th graders, Catlin here with your cool down help for uh, lesson 11 here in unit 3. And uh, we got five lines on this grid, and we got to write an equation for each. Let's jump into it. Uh, a, B, C, and D are really simple because they're vertical and horizontal lines, which we talked about today in class. It's very easy to write an equation for a vertical horizontal line. You just have to think on those lines what coordinate is repeating. I'll explain myself. Look at line A here. Okay, we got a bunch of dots on this line that just stack up vertically like this. And if you were to list what these were, they're negative 5 for X. They're negative 5 for X. And then you follow with a combination of different Y values, like negative 5, 6. Uh, negative 5, 7 negative 5, 8, so on and so forth. And you can go down to negative 5, negative 5, and it's just a vertical line of a bunch of dots where your x value, your x value is always negative 5. So whenever we write an equation for a vertical line like this, all we have to say is for A, the equation is simply x is always equal to negative 5. That's all we have to write for that. x is equal to negative 5. Because the x coordinate is always equal to negative 5. And for b, it's very similar. You just have a different value that it's equal to. But the x's are always the same for b here. They're always dots vertically at the point where x is equal to not 5, but 4. Right? x is always 4 for those. 4, 1, 4, 2, 4, 3, 4, negative 1, 4, 0. 4 is always the coordinate of the x value for all of the vertical lines. So if you've got a vertical line, that line's going to have an x equals whatever it crosses the x axis at. And then if you have a horizontal line, like for example, C and D, okay, for C and D, you'll notice for those, they're horizontal. And they don't cross the x axis. They cross the y axis at a certain point. And the place where they cross the y-axis is the number of the equation that y is equal to. In all of these, y is always equal to 4 for this one. Uh, it doesn't matter if I'm at 1, 4, 5, 4, 10, 4, negative 5, 4, negative 10, 4. Y is always at 4. And for this one, for D, the y value is always at negative 1, 2. It's always at negative 2. It's always coming down 2 from where the origin is, and that's why that one's y equals negative 2. Let's get into the one that's actually uh, a little bit complicated, and that's going to be e. So e, uh, we're going to write this one in y equals form, just like the others, but we're going to follow the formula of y equals mx plus b, which means we're going to find the y-intercept for b, and we're going to find the slope m for our equation. All right? So uh, in this particular case, we're going to have uh, the slope be found by drawing a slope triangle. But the y-intercept can be found just by looking at the graph. Where does it cross the y-axis? And our line E crosses the y-axis right here. So our uh, y-intercept is 1 for our case. All right? Your plus comes down. Your x comes down. Your y equals comes down. You just got to find your slope. For your equation. So to find our slope, a lot of different ways we could do this. We're just going to make a, a little slope triangle here. I'm going to make mine right here. Now I can see clearly that E is going downhill, so I know it's going to be negative. So I'm going to go ahead and write Y equals negative. Uh, if I count this out properly, I go down one, two, three. So I'm going down three and I'm going over one, two, three, four. So my slope is rising 3. My slope is rising 3 and going over 4. Now it's going downhill, so technically that 3 is negative because it's going down 3 over 4. So I know that my slope is negative 3 quarters, x. And then I add my 1 for my y-intercept. And there's my equation for e. y is negative 3 quarters x plus 1. And that is your homework help for Lesson 11. We'll see you guys tomorrow.